Hello, everyone, and welcome to our session with the lovely Acharya Hermi, who is the president of World Pranic Healing. We're very lucky that she has decided to spend some time with us answering some questions that some of you had um, during the last session. So Acharya Hermi, welcome. Thank you for spending you. time with us in advance. <laughs> it's a great pleasure, Nekla. Okay. And I hope that uh, this session will be useful for those who who asked for it and who needed it. Thank you so much. So, uh, you know, without any further ado, I'm gonna go jump right in into the first question. So the first question somebody asked about karma. This is a very interesting topic. And uh, looking at this question, I'm just gonna read this out right now so everyone knows. So how long does it take karma to neutralize in this lifetime? For some, it takes a few incidents and gets okay. But for others, it comes in stretches like losing jobs when it was going smoothly, when, you know, own brothers, sisters, not true, making heavy losses, you know, banks are pressurizing for loan settlements, all saved, all, you know, all saved and earned, gone, now emptied stage. The all above happened in six months time. How to overcome this? So clearly this person's had a very difficult time. And if you could just you know, yeah. help. So probably the first uh, thing that, the, that was asked is how long does it take for a negative karma? Let's focus on the negative karma, right? To be worked out. Uh, honestly, I don't have the answer. All I know is when the karma is finished, it's finished. And that is what Master Choa also have said, right? So like, how do you know that the karma is finished? So one of the example or experience that I have is something like, like this. Um, I used to wear, I, I used to, to, lo to lose eyeglasses, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, and, you sh and the time that I lose my eyeglasses are during, is, are during the time that I needed it the most. Like, I can see from afar, but not the one close, right? You know, like, when I am to write in an in a immigration form, uh, usually this is, these are the times that I, I lose my eyeglasses. That, and this happened about probably two, two years back. And uh, I think I lost my eyeglass three times. And uh, I tried to understand why I lost my eyeglass. And I, re I realized that one of the negative karma I, I, I did was something like this. I, I ordered my eyeglass to an ordinary, uh, uh, how do you call this? Eyeglass provider. How do you call them? Where you buy your eyeglass? Uh, optometrist, yeah, yeah, like yes, yes, yes. And uh, when I ordered it, I usually look for a sale, like fifty percent discount. So I'm one hundred percent sure it's it's discounted. However, when I was, I gave my 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 fifty percent payment for them to prepare the eyeglass, and when I went back, they are asking for more, and they say they committed a mistake in giving me a discount when there is no discount at all. So I said, I'm 100% sure that it, it's discounted. So in short, I did not pay for the balance. I only paid for what I'm expecting to pay. And after that, Mekla, I lost my eyeglass three times in a row. And you had to buy. And yeah. I have to buy a new one. And until when the, the third time I lost my eyeglass, I said, there is a message here that I'm not listening. So when I reflected, my, my mistake was not stealing. My mistake was indifference and hurting a person who is just earning an ordinary salary of probably $10 a day and has to pay for about probably $25 for something I did not pay. And when I realized that I went back to the store and looked for the sales lady and said, I'm going to pay. But apparently, to cut the story short, they did not accept my money, even if I'm forcing them to accept it. Because apparently, probably they realized that it was really a 50% discount. But the point is this. When I did that, Nekla, I think the law of karma said, since the lesson has been learned, and the lesson is not stealing but being indifferent or hurting someone financially, and I somehow did that correction of going back to recognize my mistake, I stopped losing eyeglasses. And how did I know that the karma is finished? Instead of losing eyeglass, I started receiving it as gift. <laughs> really? Yeah. 
it's like the the the, the father of one of my students was literally begging me, Master, please accept the gift from my father. You will make him happy if you accept. I said, no, I'm going to pay. But Master, my father already made this for you, so please, you pay for the other one, but the other one, please, Master, accept it. I said, okay, what to do? And then when I was reflecting, I said, maybe our teacher or Master Chowa or the higher beings is giving an opportunity to experience this. That when Master Chowa says, when the karma is finished, it's finished. So if you ask me, when will it end? I do not know. But all I know is this. Like you were asking, how will we solve the problem? How do we get out of debts? So then, my dear friends, work intelligently and work hard. So clean yourself as pranic healers. If you do not know how to clean yourself, learn pranic healing. Clean your aura, clean your chakras, clean your thoughts. Avoid negative thoughts. Work intelligently. Enjoy your work. Enjoy life. What is the worst thing that could happen? You lose your job. It's not the end of the world. Remember the last time I was telling you about being diagnosed with a certain sickness is not a death sentence. Losing a loved one is not a death sentence. Losing your job is not a death sentence. So you just do your part. Work hard, work intelligently. But before you start doing a work or being starting a business or getting employed in a new company, start with a clean slate. When I say clean slate, clean yourself up, forgive yourself. Forgive people who hurt you. Forgive people who cheat you. Go to the office every day. Set your goals again. Remember the session we have given? You have to set health goals, relationship goals, financial goals, spiritual goals. And one day, my dear friends, you will realize you have arrived. Until when will you, will you uh, get out of it? I do not know. God knows. But all I know is once it is finished, it's going to finish or it's going to end. Okay, wow. so I hope I hope that this is a good reminder because I also do not know. I, I tell you one year, it's finished. Until the lesson is learned, I'm sorry, the laws of karma will keep on reminding us, you need to fix yourself. So I know this isn't on a uh, question list, but you know what you said right now about indifference. And that's something I just want to highlight a little more because I think what you said is gold right now because it wasn't the karma of taking something or stealing. It was, a, it was indifference to somebody else. And I think, you know, people, you know, you are known by what you do and what you are known by what you do not do as well. So, you know, in relationships or whatever it is, or even normal day-to-day -day interactions, you know, indifference, neglect, or carelessness of other people's feelings also has a karma to it. So, oh. you know, we just have to be really careful with that because I think all of us have, have done it at some point where, you know, it's not happening to me. I don't care. It's, it's only, you know, I'm not saying that you were, but I mean, I've done it. Like it's, I have been indifferent at points to other people's feelings. And it took a while of doing erratic yoga practice, uh, to really, really understand that and to be aware of that. Um, and I think the awareness and the fact that you had the awareness and you corrected it and then you started getting more gifts, that's always a good yeah. sign. <laughs> yes, so because some of you will ask, how do I know it's finished? So like this could be an indicator. So it's already finished. Instead of losing, I'm receiving it as a gift and it's even being forced, right? So yeah. <laughs> I, I really appreciate how you pay attention to details like, yes, you're right. I could, I could have been indifferent and not even, and even fight and say, it's your fault, not my fault. Initially, I was thinking like that. Yeah. You, you, I saw it like with my own, you know, big, beautiful eyes. Because <laughs> I'm really careful with what I buy. So it's like, I, I don't want to, to spend much money on these things. I said, I know it's 100%. I'm sure that is 50% off. So yes, Mekla, this is uh, sometimes what we tend to forget. Like we do not care about what other people feel as long as, yes, I'm right. Yes, I know. I you have are, to be right. Yeah, yeah exactly. I am right. You are not the right one or you are wrong. But Master Joe said, it doesn't matter who is right or wrong, right? It's a matter of doing the right thing. Maybe they were mistaken, but can I listen? I did not listen. So can you imagine this person has to pay $10, that's about 500 yeah. pesos. How much, how much do they earn in one day? It's like two, three days salary. 
Wow. So, um, yeah, it was a good lesson. And I said, okay, Master. That's why when, when things happen like uh, I don't get what I want. So, example, um, uh, what, what do I want that I don't get? Recognition or like in my younger years, the salary increase. So, I realized that I don't have to force things to come my way. Because if I force it and I'm not entitled, it will be taken away from me just the same. I would rather wait for my entitlement to come. So like I planted the seed because that is what the, the, the meaning of karma, what you plant is what you will reap. So like what you give away is what you will receive. Now, nothing against people who lost what they have. Like as you said, no, in six months time, we do not know what has been planted in the past. And the problem sometimes when uh, we are in a certain bad situation, we, would, we do not want to accept the truth. One of the easiest way to do is to, is to look for people to blame. This is the fault of the universe. This is the fault of my father, of my mother, of my business partner. We do not want to look inside and self-introspect and check, what have I done to be in this situation? What seeds have I planted? What thoughts have I created? How did I live my life? So now, I hope that by now, most of us who have been hurt by life will stop fighting. Rather than fighting, let us try to backtrack a little and do some self-introspection and, and be honest with oneself and say, yes, this is not going to happen if I did not plant the seed. It's just that right now, I do not remember when I planted the seed. That's why I'm reaping the fruits of losing everything I have. So now, it, because I know that I will not be here for nothing, there's a lesson, I would rather focus on what lesson will I learn so that I can prevent future possibilities of me experiencing the same negative karma. No, that's and then amazing. that's amazing because whatever you're saying applies to all situations in life. It applies to your love life. It applies to your work life. It applies just in general in all, you know, the, just stepping back and looking at, you know, what you may have done to accelerate or plant what seeds you planted. All of that actually comes into it just makes so much sense and it's always such a pleasure because you've always given an opening because I have like another question that I want to ask you which was not on the list because you know what you talked about you know anyway maybe that for another time for uh, you know love lives and things like that because sometimes people lose people or they're not happy with somebody so but that's a whole different uh, session altogether <laughs> but yeah. Coming down to the second point, uh, the second question that somebody sent, uh, they asked how to overcome trust issues, decision-making issues, sleep issues caused by personal life trauma, which is affecting daily life and also professional success. So I wish I can ask this person about trust issue, like, uh, do you have problem in trusting someone or nobody trusts you because this is kind of tricky right so who, who yeah. is who has trust issue you you don't trust other people or they don't trust you so probably <laughs> exactly do that yeah, right <laughs> yeah, yeah because you you see like how come people don't trust me so that's uh, we need to take this in a different uh, uh perspective now or i cannot trust someone anymore so probably let's talk about trust issue i cannot trust someone who hurt me or who cheated me Right, now, going back to the law of karma, what you plant is what you read. And this will also answer that of how will I make people trust me? So it's like uh, the question, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> True. Right? The egg. Well, uh, exactly. <laughs> will I trust, like, will I trust pe people first or do I expect people to trust me? Which comes first? So I think it should be both. Like, I need to trust people and I need to earn the trust of other people. So like I, the trust, I need to develop trust to myself. Like example, I promise to do my thorough regular practice of meditation. And I have to wake up early and I have to trust myself that I keep my promise. Or I trust myself that 
I, from now on, I will be very thorough with my responsibilities. Because like some of you, some of us are given certain responsibilities. And sometimes you're already on top. And because we are already on the top, we don't want to exert effort in improving ourselves. Because you say, I'm untouchable. I'm already the president of the organization. Nobody can touch me. I can do anything I like. So instead of keeping your promise that I will continue to improve myself, I stop growing, I stop learning. So inside, that trust to myself is going to erode. I cannot even trust my own self. I promise to become better. I promise to, to shape up, but I'm not doing my promise or not keeping my promise. So the issue of trust is I need to trust myself before I can trust others. And to be able to trust myself, I need to keep my promise to myself. Because you see, uh, no amount of glamour, people will tell you, you know, like some of you are very kind to your Acharyas. You will tell me all the kind things. Oh, Acharya, we love you. And thank you. I appreciate that. But no amount of love coming from you will make me appreciate your love unless I love myself. So it's like, even if you tell me, oh, Acharya, you did well. Oh, Acharya, you are really amazing. You're fantastic. We love you. But I don't love myself. Your love will not even have a way to positively affect me. It's just like it goes one ear, it goes out the other ear. So the issue of trust is it has to start from inside. If I want to trust somebody, I need to trust myself first. And if I want people to trust me, I need to be trustworthy. Like, like I do the right thing with or without people looking. So like sometimes I do the right thing when somebody is looking, but when nobody looks, I do all kinds of, I hope you don't mind the word, stupid things. So it's like, you know, uh, anybody, anyway, nobody is looking. I can cheat. I can steal. Of course, you are free to do whatever you like. But the trust, you cannot gain it. You're trusting yourself because, you know, you cannot be trusted. So the trust starts with the self. If you have issue, issue with trust in trusting yourself or being trusted by others, I think it works both ways. So for you to trust others, you have to trust yourself. Whatever you want to receive from others, you have to give it to yourself and you have to give it to others. Still connected to the law of karma. What do you think? True. I, I love that because, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it, it's interesting being on this with you because when you start talking even, you, you know, you as someone who's sitting opposite you um, talking, I start thinking about the times that I have not trusted myself or you know, you need to love yourself more. You need to trust yourself more. Yes, everybody's made mistakes. Everybody has messed up at some point. So you need to forgive yourself and, and really, really follow the virtues given in the practice of pranic healing and erratic yoga. If you stick to those, whether someone's watching or not watching, you will be gold, you will be sorted. So yeah. no, that, that's, that's a beautiful way. And yes, we all need to trust ourselves more. We've gotten us, ourselves this far, and there's so much more to go. And we were talking about it. It's an adventure, right? We can't spend life, yeah. you know, sort of sitting, thinking that nothing ever, ever bad is ever going to happen. It is going to happen. But what's going to save you yeah. is the practice and the steadiness. So, uh, yes, it is an interesting life. And it is a beautiful life. It's so it I is. To... And, yeah, maybe I just was, um, um, I mean, I was touched by what you said. Regarding being busy with uh, worrying, being busy with, you know, will this person love me? You somehow ask, you know, subconsciously a certain yeah, yeah, question yeah. like, yeah. if this person stopped loving me or probably not liking me anymore or I stop loving the other person. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the future, right? But what Master Cho is giving us are tools to, to make ourselves strong, wise, and gave us the tools to be able to cope up and handle whatever comes our way. Because the truth is you do not know what's going to be on your plate. Unlike the food that you take from the table, you know, you know, you can choose. I want this, I want that. But life is not like that. Life will give you something that sometimes you don't expect. But the bottom line is this. God will not give you and me challenges that is not going to contribute to us becoming a better person. It's just that sometimes we choose the other way, looking at the, you know, the dark side, that we are not able to see the bright side. 
there's always something beautiful that will come out of whatever is in front of us. So instead of worrying, like, will I catch this example now, the coronavirus, some of us are so afraid to go out. I'm not saying that go out as much as you like. All I'm saying is if you need to go out, go out and just be careful, but please don't worry every time you step. And you are always look at everybody like a suspect. Do you are you a carrier? Is this place a, with this virus? What kind of quality will you have in your life, right? So like, uh, for me, the highest trust I trust myself because I can be trusted. I trust the people around you, me because I planted seed of trust. I did not cheat anyone, and I trust God. God will not put me in something that is not going to make me better than one what I was before. It's just that sometimes this mind do not understand what I am going through, but as we use Master teachings on purification and, uh, you know, like intelligently living our life, enjoying every moment of our life, it's just a matter of time that all these clouds of thoughts and emotions will leave us and there will be so much clarity. So like right now, no? Yeah, uh, Mekla, in the, the place where I am, earlier, the, the, la, the, the sky is very bright. Now it's full of clouds. But in a while, the clouds will go away. It's, the clouds will not always be there. So, but for us to remove the clouds faster, instead of waiting, that's why we have pranic healing. So it, it's amazing because, you know, whatever does happen, or whatever sadness or, or anger, whatever you face, you can always heal with the techniques of pranic healing and then move on. That's that's how you do it. Like, you know, it's not gonna stop bad things all the time, but you can definitely make things better. And that brings me to the next question, which is actually based on healing. And um, someone writes in, say, we have a desire that our loved ones are healthy in body, mind, and soul. When a member of the family has cancer and I do healing, but the person only believes in charismatic prayer and will not use the forgiveness techniques, for inner forgiveness and peace, will the healing still be effective? I'm at a loss how to convince this person. So I think they're wondering that if someone does not believe in pranic healing or does not want to do the forgiveness part, will the healing still be effective? So that okay. is- that Yes. Is so the, the effectiveness of the healing also depends on uh, the internal conductivity of the healer. Because the truth is, you are not the healer. You are a channel of healing. I hope this is very clear for pranic healers that sometimes we forget that we are the channel. Some of us think that we are the healer. Yes, we learn pranic healing. We move our hands in a certain direction. But please keep in mind, what is the attitude of the healer becoming an instrument of a channel of healing is very important. Because sometimes that of attachment to the healing can get in the way, right? Like, I want this person to be healed. I want this person to be well. But my friends, there are rules. The rules of, like, did the person already learn the lesson that needed to be learned? You see, sickness, like anything, cancer or whatever sickness, it carries a certain lesson, right? Cancer will not be given to a person unless there is a purpose, it's just that I will repeat, the purpose is not clear because there is not probably enough clarity of understanding of one's dynamics in life, right? So, but the truth is we will not be in a certain situation if we did not do something before that. So now to answer the question, will the healing still be effective? The answer is of course, yes, but the healer's attitude should be important, is very important. So the attitude that you are not the healer, God is the healer, you are the humble channel. Are you a humble channel or are you the obstacle to healing? Worrying too much is not going to help. Right? So like you do your part. You say like I'll give a little for those who are non-pranic healers. We do something like soul affirmation. We affirm that I am not this body and not my thoughts and emotion. I am a spiritual being. You heal as a spiritual being, as a soul and allow the power of God to flow to you and do the technique taught in pranic healing. Now, I will ask this person who is asking the question, do you trust the system? Do you trust God? Do you trust your teacher? If the answer is yes to all this question, I guarantee you the healing will be effective, even if the person does not believe. Right? So now, of course, if the person believes and cooperates, the healing will be faster. 
But since you asked me, you did not ask me, will it be faster or will it be slower? The question is, will it still be effective? It will still be effective. Okay, so again, I repeat, you are not the healer. You are the channel of healing. God is the ultimate source of healing. Now, number two, your trust in the system. Master Chowa had taught us the technique. So all you have to do is to follow the system and be detached. I think this, you need to review pranic healing. If you're too attached to the result, then you are not cutting the connection to the healer, to the patient, and the healing energy will take time to take effect. It's true. Oh. If he's sounding really worried, and that worry is permeating, obviously, if the worry is there, that it doesn't, yes. does it not there, you know, so the, the healing uh, will obviously be uh, influenced by that worry. So of she course. Just take a step yes. back and, and, and follow the protocol, yes. actually. That's all that's given. And that actually brings us to, uh, that was the last question. I'm sure that there are many more things because you've opened another beautiful line of discussion and I could go on and on and on. But I did only say that I will only take your short period of your time, but it's always wonderful talking to you. And I think I, we can just keep going on and on. Um, but for everyone who is watching, uh, thank you. And, you know, keep your eyes peeled for everything that is coming uh, because we're having a lot of videos coming up and do share these videos with people who you feel that, you know, would appreciate it. Okay. And uh, a big, big thank you to our beloved uh, Acharya Hermi. Um, it's always wonderful talking to you. And, and at points I find it difficult to stop at that point, but, uh, you know, I think we might have to because I did only say I'd take this much of your time. A big thank you to Grandmaster Chokok Sweep because without him, the techniques, the, the wisdom, the guidance will just not be there. You know, so I hand it over to you, Acharya Hermi, for the last words and thank you personally as well. Yeah, so thank you also for um, uh, giving me this chance to again communicate to you and with the necklace help. Uh, yes, you're right, Mekla. You asked one question and there are so many, you know, like side topics to it. But thank you for bringing me back to the main topic and the main concern. We just hope that this session has been useful for those who asked the question and for those who have similar questions that you were able to receive some inspiration and guidance. And whatever it is that we were not able to take up here, may the blessing of God be with you, the guidance of the higher beings be with you, to live your life happily, peacefully, joyfully, successfully, and everything that is good will come your way. Yes, thank you so much. Perfect, perfect. So be it. And thank you, everyone. Bye-bye for now. And continue sharing and spreading the work. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.